It's the eighth. Eighth. Meow. Meow, meow. Meow. Hello, good kitten internet, and this is what we're going to be working on today. Just get around to this side. This is my primary gaming desktop. It's huge. It's a cube, actually. Um, I prefer this form factor. It's very nice. And what I'm going to do... See, you can see this is before I've done anything. And you can actually see the dust. Ew. So I'm going to clean this out, recable manage, because I've had to remove and add things for a while. And we will have the whiner here. Meow. He's gonna be whining the entire time, but I'm going to set up my little tripod and I'm going to film me redoing all of this. Will this be interesting? I have no idea. All right, so these are all the screws that I've taken out so far. I still have the motherboard in its tray, but everything, well, I also have this attached, but there's no reason not to keep that attached. But everything else has been removed. There's already stuff on this table for reference. And oh boy, is it dusty in here. Ew. So I'm gonna have to deal with something. And I have just the ability. Noise. This is my electronics duster. I'm actually not sure what direction the camera's in right now. It is, it cost me, what, about, I think it was 70, 75 US. Uh, I don't know, editor me can figure that out. Um, and as a result, I don't need canned air anymore to dust things out. It's hella noisy, don't get me wrong. But with how often I need to dust something like this, it's not that big of a deal. This will come back later when I'm dusting out the 
stuff that you can't see currently. Uh, let me take my camera back. Think. Think. Far less dusty. It's actually looking fairly clean. All right, now the motherboard. This is done. Now, motherboard dry. Hi. Do I need to? Yes, I definitely need to adjust that. And let's lower the height a bit so, you know, I have a chance of seeing. And you have a chance of seeing what I'm doing. Actually, that's about right. Neat. It's a full stand lower. Okay. So now I need to, I want to, needs a strong word, but I am thinking about repasting this, which means I'm going to need to take off a lot of things. So this heat sink and fan, the fan attaches with little wire clips right here. Hi. All right. Now that that's out. I have the ability you should be able to see. Let me make sure that you can see. Uh, it's right over where the... Let me slide this to... Yeah, you should be able to see it. Um, these two screws here. That's actually what I'm undoing. That's holding on the entire thing. So... They are spring-loaded. And this is really meant to be done with a longer screwdriver. I'm going to be careful and I'm doing this one side at a time. I do not want to crack my CPU, that would be bad. You're now loose, and this edge should be just about loose. Yep. There we go. And let's see what the... Ooh. Are you actually not on, or are you so in there that you're actually stuck to the CPU? That is a possibility, and that would be bad. I do not want to rip the CPU out of its socket. Okay, you want to slide. You shouldn't be attached to anything at this point. There we go. It was still slightly threaded. Yeah, yeah, I need to clean that CPU up. You can see that it's kind of, one, has a bunch of cat hair on it, and two, the paste, or thermal compound is degrading. So, yep kind of what I was thinking was happening because CPU was running a little warmer than I would have expected. Oh, this is one of those that only go on one side. Really? It doesn't look like it should, but well, apparently it is. There we go. One stick of RAM. Two sticks of RAM. Uh, each of these sticks are 16 gigabyte sticks. Uh, this computer is 32 gigabytes of RAM installed. At some point I will be upgrading that, but that is not today. It's also fairly easy to upgrade RAM in this machine, so that's not a problem. Um, while we're at it, let's go ahead and fix that problem. So, those eagle-eyed among you, and or the people who are actually watching this in 4K, because I somehow doubt you can even notice at 1080p, may notice that there is a screw that is loose here. It's... Ah. Just give me... Oh. Helps if I actually have a... Head on it. Um, this is Torx T9, according to my own notes. Most Torx things end up being T9 anyway. Let me just grab that. It is held on by three Torx screws, and for some reason, one of them does not want to align. Um, this one here, I 
think the SSD might be partially out, and that's the reason why. Because there are multiple SSDs underneath this. So you saw me earlier pull out two three and a half inch SS or two and a half inch SSDs. There's actually two more NVMe SSDs under here. Two. Yep, I can actually see this got misaligned slightly. That's the reason why. Um, underneath here actually looks mostly fine. I'll just blow it out really fast. Apologies for noise. <laughs> Did not want that to spin. All right, so the reason why you might not want to have a fan like this spin is that if it's spinning in the wrong direction, it will actually generate power. That's how turbines work. And you don't want to introduce power into the system, especially if this is a five volt fan, which I'm thinking it is. Also, this fan is the most annoying thing in the world. Ugh. Uh, looks like the thermal pad might have melted a bit. Well, I need to go grab some rubbing alcohol anyway, so. I am using 91% isopropyl alcohol. It's recommended to use something higher percentage, but that's not what I have. And also, the main reason why you want to use a higher percentage is in case if you spill it all over the place. I am probably not going to spill it. I know, famous last words. If we need a little more than that. Also, this is long since expired, but I'm not using this for an antiseptic. I'm using this for cleaning. I have thermal compound all over the place here. I did not do a good job on this. If I remember right, I was planning on recording this, and I think I actually did end up recording some, but I ended up having to rush it because I needed the computer. And hey, look, new shiny. Let me take out the CPU. This is an AMD Ryzen 9 3900X. Don't know how well you can see that. Oh, now you can. 3900X. This is a previous generation processor at this point, but it was among the highest end processors available for this particular consumer line. Um, you can actually see crap tons of pins on the bottom. That is an AM4 socket which means that all of these pins are extremely delicate, and if I were to drop the CPU, I would be very, very sad right about now. Just trying to clean the thermal compound off of the edges. Okay. Then reinserting the CPU, because I don't have a safe spot to put it other than inside the motherboard. So what you want to do, uh, you can't see it, but there is a little triangle over here, and it matches a little triangle on this corner. You want to align them, give it a little jiggle, then put down the retention rod, and that's it. Okay, more cleanup. So I'm noticing that there's a lot of sticky residue on things, and that has me wondering if things have gotten too hot. So this thing in particular, you might be able to see the stickiness all the way over here. I'm thinking that's from this sliding around. Oh yeah, this thing is not wanting to stay. This is thermal compound as well, just really crappy thermal compound. And the idea is that it goes directly on top of the SSDs. Honestly, I should probably have this label peeled, but oh well. Um, it goes on top of the SSDs, and it uses this entire thing, which is metal, as a heatsink. Uh, this is decorative for reference. It, the particular, this is a um, philosophy of infinite potential. Oh, this is upside down for you now. 
philosophy of infinite potential. Um, this is an ASRock X570 Tai Chi motherboard. Their Tai Chi scheme, for whatever reason, is steampunk. I mean, I like the aesthetic. I just hate this fan with a passion. It is the fan of noisiness. Okay, let's put this back in. I might have this upside down. It's a tiny little plug. Should probably be using tweezers for this, but there we go. Right, make sure that that's aligned. I mean, it, I've had an SSD in there before, so it's not like it's malfunctioning or defective or anything. It's just that it slipped, which it's really wanting to slip. Okay, so like that. And let's screw back in the torque screws. Let's start with the one that didn't work before. Oh, that's much better. Much better. Okay, there we go. I wonder how much of this I'm going to have to dub over and how much of this is actually understandable. Because it's not like I'm talking at the camera, usually. So this is a very fancy motherboard. Um, this motherboard, new, cost $400. I think it was $400. It might have been $300. Uh, I still have the box with the price label on it somewhere. I could always look. Maybe Editor Me already did. After all, Editor Me actually looked up my buddy. Um, yeah, let's see. Do a quick wipe of the rest of these components. Ah, sharp edges. It's probably what I hit my knuckle on. Okay. Need to clean this off, but the motherboard is done. So I'm going to slide the motherboard back. Not actually sliding, I am picking it up and putting it down. You notice that I'm not undoing it from the tray, even though I had already started undoing it from the tray. In fact, actually, before I do this, I'm going to screw the rest of the motherboard. And damn it, I was trying not to slide it. Um, unscrew, uh, screw the motherboard back in. So I have screws labeled for Mobo. Oh. Wrong bit. Motherboard screws are not T9. Motherboard screws are Phillips three and a half. Yeah. And the other one was over here. I guess I can point out various things on my motherboard while I have this here. So most PC motherboards have a 24 pin ATX power adapter here. Make sure you can actually see it. Yeah, you can see it. You can see the entire thing as I bump into the case. Um, so a 24 pin ATX power adapter. This is how most computers get power. There's a secondary power thing, an EPS 12 volt up here. This particular motherboard has two particular plugs for it. One of which is eight pin, one of which is four pin. Um, Really, the 8-pin part is only if you're very heavily overclocking. I do not. So I think one of these is actually completely sufficient, but I have two 4-pins plugged into it instead. Um, this has four slots for RAM. You saw that I had two sticks of RAM in there before. Um, CPU socket. These are what are referred to as VRMs. Um, this is the power delivery system, basically, for the motherboard. And this particular motherboard is a very beefy VRM. Most times, high-end VRMs are used for overclocking, but coincidentally, they're also very useful for having a very stable computer. This is by far the most stable computer that I own. Part of the reason why I'm doing active maintenance on it, because I don't want it to become unstable. That would be bad. Um, this is a little heat shield thing. It's really mostly for aesthetics, but as you saw, the... SSDs that are underneath here. There's two here. There's actually a third one here, but I don't have it populated. Um, cool using this metal thing. I don't necessarily have to have the metal thing in place. I could go without, but then there's no fan grill for the fan. So that's fun. Um, this has three PCI Express X16 slots. Um, specifically, three PCI Express 4.0 X16 X slots. <clears throat> However, you can't use the full power of all three of them at once. 
Um, the CPU only has is it 24 lanes of PCI Express total, and some of them are used internally, some of them are used elsewhere. Anyway, um, there's also a little chipset here that gives me more PCI Express lanes, but those are 3.0, not 4.0. Uh, the main difference is for speed purposes, and pretty much nothing uses it other than SSDs right now. Moving on, um, we have a bunch of little headers here, but you'll notice there's a little power button here and a reset button. So this motherboard actually has the ability where if I had it plugged into the power supply, I would not need a case. I can actually run it just like this and press the power button like so, instead of having to hit the front side of the case. I like that feature, even though I've never used it. There's also a little... Um, dual eight segment display thing here. This is actually going to give me error codes in the event that my computer isn't booting properly. So that's nice. Um, along the side here, this is the USB 3.0 plug of doom that everybody hates. Uh, the reason why people hate this particular style of plug is, let me reach, uh, this is accessible. So this is what it is on the case end. It's a very inflexible plastic Molex style plug. It sticks like, oh, it's upside down. So it sticks like this, straight up, which means a lot of things bump into it and it's very inflexible. Nobody particularly likes that plug style. That's why for newer generations, they went with this. This is a USB 3.1 Gen 2 plug. I hate the naming conventions of USB, by the way. Um, commonly used as a USB-C port. Um, this has a front panel USB-C. It also has rear USB-C. Here, let me show you what the back looks like. Uh, this is the rear panel stuff. So we've got a little flash BIOS button. That way I can flash the BIOS when the computer's not actually powering on. We've got Wi-Fi. Uh, this is Wi-Fi 6, actually. We have a PS2 plug. We have two USB 3.0 ports here, an HDMI port for onboard graphics that I don't have, uh, a one gigabit, unfortunately, this is the one concession I had to make with this motherboard, a one gigabit network adapter, um, four more USB 3.0 plugs, two USB, or, and US, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 plugs. It is 3.2, not 3.1, but um, this one is USB-A, this one is USB-C, and they go at the full 10 gigabit speed. Also, standard audio jacks. Um, Unlike a lot of computers, this um, I.O. shield is integrated onto the motherboard. I didn't have to install it. Anyway, moving on. So we've got the USB 3.2 Gen 2. We've got, let me tip this up so you can see it better, eight SATA 3 plugs. Uh, I am not using anywhere near that many. In fact, I'm actually only using two, four, two SSD, two optical drive. We've got the front panel connectors that everybody hates. Um, I am going to hate myself for the fact that I unplug this later. As mentioned, the power button, reset button, LED. Uh, these are the USB 2.0 headers. So um, I don't actually use that anywhere on this case. So this is if I had front panel USB 2.0. Since I don't, it's kind of useless but I could add in like a little internal USB port if I wanted to. Um, this is for the speaker, like an internal speaker type of thing. Uh, we've got more fan headers. There's four of them on this motherboard, if I remember right. One, two, three, four. Yep, four. One, two, three, four. Wait, I thought there were six actually. Am I missing some? Yep, there's one back here, and there's one more somewhere. I bet it's hiding underneath this thing. Oh, no, there it is, right there. Also, that's another USB port. That's just an individual USB port. Um, some, what can we call it, um, water cooling systems require one. Uh, there's also addressable RGB headers. So if I had any... RGB LEDs, I can plug them into this and then the motherboard can control them and sync everything up. Um, the original heat sink and fan for that CP the CPU here actually had RGB headers that I plugged in just out of curiosity while I was waiting for my big lug of steel to arrive. Um, this is a little module for more LEDs if I remember right. 
This is for the special adapter that I'll talk about in a bit, and this is the front-facing audio. Simple. Okay, now that this is done, let's... ow. This thing is... actually, this thing is almost certainly what sliced up my finger. Let's clean the kilogram o metal. So this is the heat sink that I use. Oh wow, the inside is dusty. I'm gonna have to dust this out. Um, this thing is huge. You notice there's a very large number of very sharp fins. And the reason why I like it is that it's huge. So the way heat dissipates is, through a heat sink is by surface area. So in general, the more surface area that you have exposed to the heat, the quicker it will dissipate without the use of a fan. And with the use of a fan, it dissipates even faster. So what you want is a heat sink that has as much surface area as possible. And something like this has a crap ton of surface area. Let me just clean off the bottom because I'm gonna reapply thermal paste. There we go, that's better. You can see how shiny this thing is. Um, this is actually polished. You do not want to touch this with your fingers because then you might ruin some of the surface thing. Anyway, um, again, I'm going to need to blow through this. But anyway, um, these are heat pipes. There are six heat pipes in this case. Heat pipes are a form of liquid cooling. Uh, you will notice that graphics cards primarily use heat pipes along with some coolers. And what it is, is that by way of capillary action, if I remember correctly, there's a small amount of liquid that's enclosed in this. It's not water, it's some other type of liquid. And as this heats up, it transfers the heat down the heat pipe very efficiently. Water cooling is very useful if you want to move heat from point A to point B. It's not actually useful for cooling. That's the reason why water cooling makes perfect sense in a very condensed setup, but in a very open setup like what I have, air cooling is actually more efficient. The more you know. This is why I took thermodynamics in college. So, uh, let me make a bunch of noise again. All right, that's a lot better on dust. Um, you can even see the lines in my hands and the cuts and so on from holding this. So I'm not going to hold it for too much longer. I'm just going to go grab some thermal paste. Uh, yeah, we're basically done with this, and now I'm going to start reassembling things. So I'm going to grab the thermal paste, and I'll be right back. All right, now before I continue, I thought I would show you what it actually came with. So this is the heat sink and fan that the processor originally came with. This is an official AMD cooler. Um, has little areas for RGB, and you can see that it has a crap ton of fins, but they're not exposed to as much air. So the surface area on this is significantly lower. Also, this is a top-down cooler, which oddly enough in my case is probably better than what I have, but I prefer this heat sink design. Also, I need to clean off the bottom, so I figured I'd do that now while I have rubbing alcohol out and my hands are already dirty. You will notice that I do not pet my cats while I'm doing this. Let me make sure you can see it. I don't know how far over you can see right now. Ooh, this is really in there. I do like how the heat pipes make direct contact. You also notice that there's only four heat pipes, and it's copper-based. You know why it's copper? Because it looks prettier. I'm serious. Um, if I remember correctly, steel is actually better at conducting heat. At least the steel that's on the other variety. So the copper is to make it look pretty, even though it costs more. I know, I'm a little obsessive over how cooling works because I actually took college courses on this specifically so I can learn how. Not this is good enough. I'm not going to be using this anytime soon, if ever. Um, maybe in a different case. Like if I wanted to put this processor into a case that didn't quite fit. Okay, let's move this. I'm running out of space, as usual. Okay, move this back into view. Now, there are multiple ways that you can apply thermal compound. 
Uh, in this case, I am using Thermaltake TG7. It's because it's what I was able to find. I normally end up using Noctua's stuff, but this is what I had. And yes, I am going to wash my hands after this. Again, this is why I'm not petting kitties. So you want roughly a pea worth. That's about a pea. Now, some people do the pea method like what I just did, and some people do a line instead. It really doesn't matter. The differences between the ways that you apply thermal compound are negligible, as long as you don't apply way too much or way too little. So, from here... Oh, wait. Before I do anything, I'm going to put the sticks of RAM back in, because it's annoying to do these. So... It actually does matter where I'm supposed to put these. I am supposed to put them in row two and four. So this is row two. I have it backwards. Right, this is... Uh, so there's two different styles of RAM socket. This one is one where only this side has clips that open and close. Most of them that I deal with are the variety that have clips on both sides, so it's harder for me to... I totally should have done this the other way so I can actually see what in the world I was doing. It's harder for me to handle the clips. Also, um, you will notice that this RAM has a heat spreader and heat sink on it. It's useless. There is actually no need whatsoever to have that heat sink. It's probably not even attached. I actually have some sticks of RAM that the heat sink isn't even attached to the RAM. It's just there for decoration because gamers. Okay, so I need to line this up. And then maybe we'll screw things back in. Isn't this exciting? Oh, I've had this slid over a bit. That's fine. Now I'm actually above the lights. So you can probably hear me better now. Screw on each side until you can feel it catch. Don't tighten yet. Because they may not be aligned. Then start tightening until it starts getting very slightly harder to screw in. Repeat on the other side. And basically you're gonna to wanna to try to balance pressure as much as possible. So you don't crack your CPU. Now, I know it's not that easy to crack the CPU. You can be less gentle than I am being, but I like being gentle. Being gentle is awesome. Also, do not over tighten these. If you are using some type of power tool, stop. The, this is a little too delicate. You need to use the screwdriver because Hand tightening is a lot harder to over tighten. It's still possible. There we go. So you want it tight, but not so tight that it's going to crack things. Now that we have that back in, let's take a look at our fan. This fan is actually not that dusty. I've probably cleaned this off more recently, but I'm gonna grab another paper towel and clean it off. Once more, the reason why I don't use the Forgot it. I'm not mic'd. The, the phone is mic'd. Anyway, um, the reason why you don't air blow this type of thing is because it will act as a turbine. In this case, it doesn't really matter that much because it's not plugged into anything. But I've noticed that blowing air doesn't usually get the dust off of these blades very well. I'm still going to blow air on it after I wipe and try to get the edges. Oh, um, something I was trying to point out. If at all possible, when it comes to fans, try to get PWM fans. You will tell the difference that it's PWM because one, it might be labeled, and two, it'll have four pins on the fan connector and not three. The reason for that is that PWM, which stands for pulse width modulation, by the way, is basically a way where it will modulate its speed. Um, you can use, PWM is also used for lights, um, that's actually how dimmers work for LEDs, typically. It's... What it's doing for an LED is actually it's 
going at full brightness, then off, then full brightness, then off extremely rapidly. In this case, it's going at full power, then off, then full power, then off extremely rapidly. It's the same concept, it's just different results because one's a fan and, well, one's a light. Um, some people are affected by PWM lights, but fans are fine. All right, guys. Damn, that thing is loud. I wish I was wearing my headphones right now. Okay, second tip when it comes to fans, and this is pretty much universal. You will notice that one side does not have a logo and one side does. On some fans, one side will have a logo that's in black and white and one side will have it in full color. The better side, the advertiser friendly side, so in this case, the side with the logo, in other cases, it might be the side with the color logo, is the direction that the airflow goes. So air is going to come from here and out here. Every computer fan does it the exact same way. Oh, lowering it down. This time trying to get a little lower than I had it before. And clip on. You can see that these clips are actually fairly easy to get on. Um, I have a fan that's much harder to get on instead. Uh, and then I am going to plug this in. This time I'm going to plug it into fan 3. I have a reason for this. And that is, I think I'm going to add a second fan. Dun, dun, dun. Where am I? Hmm. No, I'm, if I was going to add a second fan, I'd add it here is the problem. Uh, nah, I won't bother adding another fan. So I'll plug this into CPU fan 1. Does it actually matter? No, not at all. Although some motherboards will complain if it's not plugged into one. This one is not one of them. Anyway, just folding the cable back where it doesn't get interfered with for anything. And we've got this back. Now, motherboard's done for now. Let's go ahead and switch over to the everything else. So you notice that you will notice that I ripped out every component from this machine. And the reason being is that some of the components weren't working properly. And I wanted to take a look. So let's get back the case. And I'm probably going to have to readjust height again. Uh, you know what? I probably don't need to adjust height at the moment. Whoa, why is this case uneven now? The, it's not level. My, why are you not level? Oh, I forgot to take a look at this filter. Strangely enough, this filter is perfectly fine. This is the power supply filter. I'm gonna make noise anyway, just in case. Yeah, it looks the same. So this allows the power supply, which resides here, to pull clean air. So it puts a filter on it, that way when it's sucking up air, it doesn't suck up air that's dirty. Um, that's more useful for situations where I have carpet. I do not have my computer on bare floor. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but I actually have a small little pedestal for my computer. It happens to fit perfectly, even though it's meant for a printer. An inkjet printer, so it doesn't even work for my actual printer. Anyway, I wanted to see about this. So, that's this thing. So, there's a problem with this thing, namely it doesn't work. Um... <laughs> And when I was looking online about it, so what this is supposed to be is that these bays right here, um, I'll show you from the front. So these bays right here, they're what's referred to as hot swap bays. That is to say, uh, where did I put the little hot swap thingies? Oh, it's underneath there. Uh, no, I can get at one of them. That is to say, you take a little tray like this, you have a hard drive in it, you slide it in, and it connects. Uh, current, it, the front panel would stop it from sliding. Um, and then when you don't want to use that drive, you pull it out. It's meant to be, so this case is what's referred to as a test bench, 
the idea being that you'd swap hardware frequently. Um, I don't actually swap hardware frequently. I just wanted a case where the motherboard was standing horizontally, or was resting horizontally instead of standing up vertically like most desktop cases. But this thing. So I read online, because I was trying to figure out why this wasn't working, and I had read online that this thing fails very, very often. And when it fails, it frequently takes the drives with it. And the reason for it has to do with this thingy. So this is what's on the inside. Um, this just plugs into your hard drive. Um, these would work for either two and a half inch or three and a half inch drives. Although for some reason, they're very slightly off. It's probably not possible for you to tell, but the ports aren't actually straight. They're slightly bent. That's not the problem that most people have though. The problem is with this thing. So this, you can see over here, is the solder point for the power for this. If you look really closely, there's exposed wiring. In my case, the only part that's exposed, no, actually, I can also see exposed for five volt. Um, yeah, so this can short out really easily. So what I'm going to do is just take this out, which I already have. I'm not going to put it back. I'm going to see if I can get a replacement for this. Because the case should still be under warranty. It's only two years old, and I think it has a five-year warranty. So I'm going to leave it be. I would remove this entire thing, because that would be really nice, except that I don't have anything to put in there. And I don't want a big hole at the front of my case, because dust. So I'm going to keep it as is. Although, I'm curious to see what it would look like with it off. But, eh, did not want to put it like that. Um, just flipping the case over. I'm trying not to scratch up the table underneath. It's not mine, it's my housemate's table. Um, it's back here. So there's just four screws here, and then there's four screws on the front. Yep, four screws on the front. So if you unscrew all of those, this entire bay just comes out. The problem is I have no idea what the heck to do with that bay otherwise. Um, front facing ports would be great. This computer is lacking in front facing ports. Um, I can always use more. So I may end up doing something like that. But anyway, um, let's wipe off the last remnants of dust that didn't come out from the lower. For reference, I'm just using a dry paper towel. There are no electronic components in this case anymore, so I don't have to worry about static at all. There. So, what I want to do is put this case, put everything back in but try to make it a lot more organized. So when I built the bottom part of this case before, I panicked because I actually built the top part first because that's what you normally do on a case. And in this case, you need to build the bottom part first. The bottom part is where drives are. So we have my two SSDs. You'll notice that they're on two different sides of this little sled thing. Um, the bottom one here is a 960 gigabyte drive. The top one here is a one terabyte drive. So this is two terabytes of solid state goodness. I am just dusting this off really fast. Uh, no, I'm not gonna use the blower for this. That doesn't make any sense. Nothing's, there's no moving parts in this or anything. Okay, so normally this was in a cage that's down here. What I'm thinking about is whether I need the cage or not because I only have two drives here. I don't have a bunch of three and a half inch drives that this cage, uh, this, this cage uses. And honestly, I really don't want a cage if I can help it. So what I'm thinking about doing is screwing it in. Um, I'm just gonna leave it like this for the time being. I'll come back in and screw it in later. That, it's not going to take that much effort for me to do after the fact. So, um, these require SATA. 
Um, I would like to color code this, so I'm going to. I've got two black SATA cables and two red SATA cables. Actually, I have four red SATA cables because I had the other two plugged into the drive cage thing up here. So, red means danger. These are danger cables. I prefer the ones with the clips for this. So, I am using red for danger. Specifically, with the idea that the red ones, oh, this side does not, this one does not have a clip. Um, that one does not have a clip. That one does not have a clip. Well, crap. Uh, are my black ones the ones with clips? Or do I seriously only have one of these with a clip? I have one red and one black with a clip. Good job, me. Whatever. So these are not going to be color-coded unless if I can grab another set. Hold on, I'll be right back. All right, apparently we're going without clips because uh, these are the only two that I have with clips that I can quickly find right now. And again, little bit of a time crunch. So these are keyed for reference. So you will notice that there is a little notch. Uh, gonna focus? Gonna focus? Oh, now you focus down here and then unfocus. Anyway, there's a little notch on this side. It's only gonna go in one way. Also, if you look at this straight on, you can see that there's a little L there. Do not force these in. These on the drive side are very delicate. I have broken multiple. They're even more brittle when they've been exposed to heat, which these drives certainly have. Okay. I am going to place these cables out here for now. Slide well, back like that, that's fine. Um, we are going to need power. So, um, I have too many things over here. Power. So you will notice that I have what's referred to as a modular power supply, which is to say my power supply can disconnect the cable at both ends. So I can build this without having to have the power supply in place, which is very useful. If you are building a desktop computer and you have any room at all, anything at all in the budget to be able to afford a power modular power supply, do it. It's worth it for the hassle removal alone. There we go. Actually, oh, I like this. That is going to be its own cable to the power supply. Um, now we need optical drives. Uh, where can I put those? Hello, optical drive. Where are you? This is going to be the longest recording of a video on this phone ever. Make sure I don't have any messages while I'm looking. Okay. And I also found the drives. So, these are two optical drives. I kind of showed during the fast forward, but I don't know if editor me caught it. This one is a Blu-ray drive. Specifically, it's a Blu-ray drive and DVD burner. Not that I burn any DVDs anymore. And this drive is a regular DVD drive. The reason why I have two drives is really simple, because I rip music and I have a very large amount of things that need to be ripped, so I just rip from both drives at the same time. And I have the space for it anyway, what difference does it make? So, I put in both drives. I originally had a different drive in here, but it wasn't functioning. So on this case, and here I can remove this for the time being so I can show you, 
put that where I'm going to inevitably lose it. On this case, yeah, there are two little lock things over here. So you slide a drive in. This is the stubborn one. Slide the drive in until it's where you want it, and then you lock. What the lock does, see, it's locked. What the lock is actually doing for reference is that you see that there are screw holes on the side of the drive. It's also on the other side. Um, the lock is just putting little pins inside of the screw holes so it doesn't move around. See? No moving. Doing the same thing with the other drive. There we go. Those are in. I really like that system. It's so much more convenient than having to screw it in. It also makes it really easy to remove. So all I have to do is this little levers over here, flip the leather, leather, lever, and pull it out. But now we have power. And it. Once again, grabbing another one of these. Um, so each of these have three SATA power connectors on them, and I need four total, so I need two of these cables anyway. So I just have two separate cables, one for these, one for the SSDs. So now we will cable this. You can see the back of my head. Congratulations. The back of my head is boring outside of the mold that's sitting on top of it. I try to think about cable management well in advance because I don't want a rat's nest of cables. And I shouldn't have a rat's nest of cables. I will have to go back in and screw this part in, but where I am planning on screwing it in, which is here, you will notice that there's not really a rat's nest of cables. Obviously it's not screwed in, so it's not pushing down. For the time being, I am just going to what? Like this, I suppose. Sure, we'll go with that. So. Now grab the two black cables. One. Two. And plug these in. One of these lock. One of these is a right angle cable. Dang it. Um, right angle cable should be fine on this side. Oh, this locks. Just not the other end. Note that hat. Screw it. Don't care. So I don't like right angle cables in this particular design because they're just annoying. They don't help me at all. I'd prefer straight cables, but unfortunately, actually I do have some. Should have done it the other way around. So I'm going to Oh yeah. This is the action that people subscribe to me for. Conveniently, it's actually drawn on the top of this optical drive, how they go in. Not that I was paying attention to that at all, I actually just remember off the top of my head, but, you know, it's a thought that counts. Anyway, I want all of these cables always going under here, because this area here is actually where the motherboard tray resides, and I don't want anything on that. Uh, next. Um, suppose I should put this back in. This is the front panel I.O. And you can see this panel has two buttons. One's power, one's reset. Two three and a half or two and a half millimeter jacks? Three and a half millimeter three and a half millimeter jacks and two USB 3.0 ports. Um, it also has this weird gap over here. 
And what I was planning on doing was I have this. This is my USB 3.1 adapter. And what I had done was put it like this. That would be nice, except that there's no place for me to put that on the front of my case. So I have never actually used this, unfortunately, even though it's been plugged in all of these years. And I even bought an adapter to make it work. And it looks like it should work over here, but I don't have the capability of drilling through plastic. I mean, I probably do, but I don't like drilling, so. Oh, I forgot to wash my hands. I'll be right back. So the reason why I usually wash my hands after putting on thermal paste is that I usually have thermal compound on my fingers. And I don't want that spread around everywhere. It didn't spread, it's just that I don't want it to. Should I have a look inside of here? It's just plugged in on the other side with hot glue. It's kind of dumb. But this is what I have. So uh, I need to move this up a bit so you can see what I'm doing. But I'm basically just threading cables through holes. I just want to do this before the next step because the next step is to put on the Wait, does this actually go in two separate holes? Seriously? No, it doesn't. Okay, good. So that would be dumb. I don't know why this hole even... Because that's a field management hole. Right? Then it just screws in. Which I'm going to do right now. Uh, from panel left. Yes, I did label everything. So what I showed toward the beginning was a magnetic... Um, parts tray, basically. It's actually more like a tiny whiteboard with magnets. And the reason that I like that is that it makes all of the screws stay on the damn board. And then you just use a dry erase marker to label where things go. I forgot to dust these cables first. Really just the front part that needs dusting. I still need to eat lunch. So, um, from here we have fans. So I have two case fans. Once more, remember, logo, not logo. So it will blow this way. Also, these fans actually have arrows on them somewhere. Yeah, down here. Right and forward. These definitely need to be cleaned. They are the dirtiest fans in my case by far, because this is air intake. And air intake has dust. Who would have thought? Probably should have worn a different shirt for this because I'm gonna get this all dusty and this is the shirt that I'm planning on wearing for role playing tonight because I'm running. So at some point my phone decided to crash its camera app. That's awfully nice of it. So I have no idea how much footage I just lost. Sorry for the hand covering. It's awfully awkward to get these things on. I don't think I lost much, but in case I lost the last little bit, self-tapping screws. They are the devil. So insert fan like so. Screw from this side in because I can't reach the other direction. Devil screws. The reason why they're the devil is that they take way, way more hand power than the rest of these. And I do not have particularly strong hands anymore because they've been overused over the years. I would really like to know how much footage I just lost. But I know it didn't stop that long ago because my phone hadn't locked yet. So I think it might've stopped when I went to go grab the screwdriver. 
I'm hoping that's the case because otherwise I'm going to be upset. Tore down my computer for this. I mean, I needed to anyway, but still. It could have waited another month potentially, but hey, might as well do this for a vlog, right? Do it for the vlog. Screwing them in is usually not the problem. It's unscrewing them. That's the problem. Which I hate. You want them all screwed in as much as possible. You'll notice that there's little corners on this. They're actually rubber corners to reduce vibrations. So these fans are significantly quieter than normal. They're also big. I have an even bigger fan, but unfortunately it doesn't fit. I bought it specifically for this case. It's the size of the top part of the case, as in all of this. And the idea was that I was just going to have that fan blow up. And everything else would be an intake. But alas, it was not to be. All right. Second fan. Same routine as the first. Gonna dust it first. Ugh, this thing is filthy. So I know not too many people watching me actually build custom computers or anything. But is this content even interesting to anybody? I never know. I mean, I find it interesting, and I find similar things that I'm not necessarily interested in interesting, because I find that I enjoy things that other people enjoy the most. So, for instance, if you're very happy about, say, for instance, making a sock, I will totally watch a knitting tutorial on that, as long as you are actively enjoying it. I enjoy computer stuff, even if I want to sneeze right now really badly. I don't necessarily enjoy doing this maintenance that much, but I enjoy the end result, and I like talking about the process, because it's fascinating to me. Also, most people who build computers don't even think about things like thermal dynamics and so on. They just kind of go, oh, this goes here, and that's not as fun. Okay, this one needs to oops, I have a little bit more dust to get rid of. This one needs to go in like this. Ugh, that's awkward. This is probably the one that's going to need the extension, isn't it? So what it is is that this is meant to be at a different angle, basically. Um, oops. Can't do it that way. I'm gonna have to do it this this way. So the little cord that's sticking out here, there's a hole on this case for being able to put it on, but the the middle holding this in is blocking that off, which is not great. So this case can actually handle larger fans than I have. So these are 120 millimeter fans. I think it handles 140. But I don't have any spare 140 millimeter fans. Although maybe I should pick one up. I'd want to pick up two. So the way airflow works is that it's effectively speed times the uh, area of the fan itself. So in other words, pi r squared Pi times the radius of the fan, which in this case, the diameter is 120 millimeters, so that means that the radius is 60 meters, 60 meters, 60 millimeters. Um, so the radius squared, and then times pi, and then times how fast it's spinning. So in other words, the bigger the fan, the slower you have to spin it in order to get the same airflow. And fun fact, since you're talking about radius squared, that means it takes significantly less radius than it does airspeed or uh, rotational speed 
in order to get the same result. So a 120 millimeter fan might need to spin at 1000 RPM when a 80 millimeter fan might need to spin at 2000 RPM. I don't know if those are the exact numbers. Uh, hey, editor me, how about you do some math? All right, are only four of those in there? Let me stick my head in. One, two, three, four. Also, I keep hitting the stand. Sorry about that. It's right at my toes, basically. And this tripod is not very heavy, so it moves around really easily. All right, we've got the front-facing fans in. That's good. Now we can put back on the front. So this is what the front of my case looks like. I showed it a little bit earlier, but this is just the front by itself. I am gonna blow this out. This kind of acts like a filter, but not really. What I should do is stick an actual filter in here, but then I'd have to take this entire thing off constantly and ew. Uh, so noise. I love that thing, but damn, I hate its noise. Okay. So let's just stick that like that. There are seven clips for this front, but if you line things up correctly, it just snaps in place, and that's nice. Okay. Power supply is next. So basically what I'm doing is I'm doing everything on the ground floor first. And yes, that is a floor. Um, you will notice that there's actually two, well, you can't see it from that angle. Uh, tip it up. There's two spots for a fan here. Those are 80 millimeter fans, and I do not have any, nor do I want any, nor do I need any. So this entire bottom area gets very little airflow, but that's fine because there's new components in here that really heat up. Usually, in a case like this, you have a crap ton of hard drives stuffed in it. And if you have hard drives stuffed to the gills inside of that part of the case, well, you're going to need the um, airflow. I do not have anything like that, nor do I want anything like that. I don't intend to have any spinning rust in any computer case that I have outside of a file surfer from now on. Spinning rust is the derogatory name that computer users use for referring to hard drives. Because they are spinning around, they are made of metal, they are slow. They would actually rust if they were exposed to the air, eventually. Right. And these use thumb screws to attach for some weird reason. But I am using a screwdriver because my thumbs do not fit around this. Can you even see what I'm doing? Uh, no. I can't tip this over because I need to screw it in. Oh well, um, just pretend that I'm just screwing this in. <clears throat> I promise there's more interesting things coming. Actually, wait, I don't want to screw this in yet. I want this slightly out, derp. I forgot my own order of doing things. So anyway, on this case, what you want to do in order to have things be tidy is that you want to do everything on the ground floor before you move up to the top floors. So what we need to do now is plug things in the power supply. We have two SATA plugs here and here. On the bottom of the power supply, which I will just show you like so, you will notice that there's things labeled like SATA 1, SATA 2, SATA 3, PERIF, CPU, VGA1, VGA2, and also an eco option. Eco should be on. I wonder if I accidentally flipped that. Um, this is the part of the reason I must have, because Eco was definitely on before. It's part of the reason why there was no dust over here. So the Eco feature is basically, hey, look, while there are, is not enough load for you to need the fan, don't turn it on. Most power supply fans just stay on constantly because people are afraid that, hey, look, the computer isn't working because the fan didn't spin up. I like having the power supply fan off until it's needed because there's no reason for it to be on. So I am going to plug in 
the two state of things now. Apologies for my head. I don't have this memorized this is where it goes. Okay, we've got the two state of things plugged in. We're gonna need a few other things plugged in, which I'm going to get to right now, because again, I'm doing the bottom before I do the top. It is a good way of handling things when it comes to this case in particular is bottom up, just bottoms up. So we are going to need a few extra cables. Um, we need VGA. This is for your video card. If you have a powerful machine, you absolutely need a VGA cord. Um, some computers actually need two of them. Mine does not. I am actually fine with just this. If I ever upgrade my video card, I will need the second one, which goes right next to it. Then we have the little EPS power thing, which goes here for CPU one. Again, once more, we're just putting them up like this. And then we have motherboard, this thing. Oops, I have this upside down. That does not help me. And that is the last thing that goes in the basement. So now I'm going to push this in and screw it in. I can't slide this back any further because, yeah, that's about as much as I can slide it back. So you'll be able to see my hand screwing something in. That's not much, but. So, yeah. Now I'm going to screw this in. Again, these are thumb screws. I could do this by hand, but I don't want to because there's not enough clearance for me and my really big hands. As usual, I always try to screw things in where I catch enough for it to slot in, but I don't tighten until I have the second screw in. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom, which you won't be able to see very well. And the bottom is actually the part that I can't get with my thumbs very well. Because seriously, if you thought thumb screws back here were useful. I mean, I appreciate the motherboard manufacturer and using, or the case manufacturer and using thumb screws everywhere. I love thumb screws, don't get me wrong. Thumb screws are awesome. We do not need thumb screws on things that will not be needed to be swapped in and out. A power supply is usually not needed to be swapped in and out. I know this is supposed to be a tense, test bench and all, but seriously. Okay, those are now in. Now, Let's start tidying because these are going to be on top. So I don't need to worry about those at the moment. I'm just shoving them in where they're out of the way. We need to worry about the things that are under the tray. That is all of this. So some of these are going to need to come out and go over the tray. Like for instance, this and this, this is CPU. Yeah. I'm going to have them go that way. This is actually going to need to come out on the other side of the tray. So we're stuffing in slack in the middle here. We'll end up tying these things down in a bit. But this, this is all going to the motherboard. This is going to be going to a video card. These are actually going to go elsewhere. So basically what I'm doing is that I'm looking at my motherboard and seeing where things need to plug in at and sorting from there. So much noise, I'm sorry. I don't know how well this is getting noise canceled, but probably not that well. Uh, these, so. This is going over here. These two are going to go under, then up and around, just like this. 
Okay. Now is the time that I would start cable tying. I don't necessarily need to, though, down here. I'm going to anyway, though, because this is a mess. What I don't want to do is accidentally get things tangled, and that is already going to happen no matter what I do, because these cables are not as flexible as they should be. So, what I'm going to do is tie together everything that goes to the back part of the motherboard. That is, these things. Um, I'm going to have way too much slack for this, so I'm going to shove this down here. And you will notice that there are cable tie straps, strap locations, all over the place. I use Velcro wire ties. Also, I can move this back forward because you're needing to pay attention over here now. I use Velcro wire ties. Why do I use these instead of plastic ties? Because plastic ties are the devil. No, um, it's because I don't like non-reusable ties. I know you can get things to look neater without. I don't care. Things as well. And basically. So Velcro wire ties are cheap, especially these. Very cheap. They're not as cheap as zip ties, but zip ties are disposable. These are reusable. So I vastly prefer these. You can actually cut off the little tails at the end. I don't like doing that because again, I like reusable things. Okay. This is gonna have a large amount of cable excess. So I'm actually going to do this. That'll be good for the time being. These two will be tied together, but I'm going to do that after I put on the motherboard tray. There. So the motherboard tray is only going to come out to about here, if I remember right. But let's find out, because it's time to put it on. Reaching over, apologies. Motherboard tray. So it actually just rests inside of that little area, then slides forward. Like so. See? You can see I tied it right where it needs to go. That actually lined? Uh, it's close enough. These are held on with once more thumb screws. This time I actually do use hand tight, usually. These, this is not quite aligned, is it? No, it is. Okay. I use the thumb screws here because this is something that I actually might want to replace without digging out a toolkit. So you will notice that you can't really see much of any of the cables from underneath outside of this cluster. And that's the point. I like them looking neat. This looks neat. One, two, three, and four. Do I need four thumb screws for this? Absolutely not. Am I going to have four anyway? Of course I am. Okay, so you will notice that there's little holes right here that these cables can fit in. It's almost as though I planned it. Okay, so this can actually go through this hole. This can go through the same hole, except that this is going to be stubborn. Hold on, let me do this in the other order. It's going to be easier if I do it the other way. I hate this cable. Luckily, it's being replaced. It is being phased out for a different style entirely. And this plugs in here. 
Not that you can see because my hand, my arm's in the way. Oh, I have it upside down, don't I? I can't see what I'm doing either, if that helps. It crashed again. So all I just did was plug these in. You will notice that the red cables look ugly. I know. I prefer them color coded more than I do having them match, but I also don't have four black cables handy. So I have four red cables, but that's defeating the point. I do have a gray cable and I have a second gray cable somewhere as well. That would work, but I don't know where the second one is. So this will do. All right, we've got drives plugged in. We need to plug in fans. There's one fan connector. There's the other fan connector. Let's see, this one easily reaches here. And this is the problem one, isn't it? Because in theory, that would reach here, but not quite. That's the reason why I had an extension cable. Okay, this makes sense. Where did I put said extension cable? Here it is. All right, where do I actually want this then? Should probably actually go here. Unfortunately, this is a cabling disaster. I am going to zip tie, or velcro tie this. Do, 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 do. I really hope it's not corrupting all of these videos when it crashes. Once more, I will be very upset if that's the case. I know I'm not touching the phone because the phone's up there. My hands are down here when it's crashing. And this is all power and basically no data, so... I don't need to worry about anything on that. Uh, other thing I wanted to make sure of is that there were no cables that were poking fans. I did have that problem on this computer originally. Now I have these two and this and cards, obviously. So let's get to that. All right. <sighs> let's do the easy one first. So this is for HD audio. HD audio, there's one pin missing here, there's one pin missing there. It goes the only way it can without bending pins. I could do this up above on the tray. I think I will actually. I wish there was a cable management hole over here, but there isn't. I may end up sneaking this through anyway though. Wait, does this even fit? <sighs> well. Yeah, it'll fit. I just need to finagle it a little better. Do, 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 do. Oh, I inverted it while I was trying to do that. There we go. Really wish I didn't have this anymore. So this is for an obsolete standard. Uh, it's AC97, give you a hint. It was last primarily used in 1997. No, um, that's when the standard was made. And 1997 was 24 years ago at this point. Nothing uses that standard. I really don't understand why it's still there. All right, now this thing, which I'm also gonna feed through the same hole. My bouquet of plugs. I have one plug that didn't make it. There we go. And each of these little things are switches or LEDs. They go in the pin cluster here with really tiny font. I'm not going to explain, but uh, like 
where everything goes, I'm just going to say some things out loud that I'm plugging in. This is reset switch. Reset switch goes here. Switches do not matter where plus and minus is, only the LEDs do. So you will notice that some of these have a plus and minus on it and some of them do not. Power switch. Power switch goes on top here. Nothing, and there we go. All right. Power LED. Plus is on the left. Plus on the left. Minus on the right. There we go. And last is hard drive LED, which is not really used on this computer at all, but you know, plugging it anyway, plus on the left. There we go. Now I pull this monstrosity back in. And now it doesn't look as bad. These things on the other hand need to go someplace. Well, this is gonna end up going in a moment. This actually does have to wrap around, unfortunately because this cable will not fit anywhere else. Uh, actually, it might fit on under the motherboard tray now that I'm looking at it. Uh, do I really want to undo the motherboard tray for this? Yes. <sighs> Wish I would have thought about that earlier, but that's okay. This won't take that much work. That's why they're thumb screws because this is the type of thing that I undo often. Okay. this doesn't get tangled so it needs to go under those there we go that works redo the motherboard tray I should just call this video, I'm bored, let's take apart my computer and put it back together again. Hopefully editor me will remember that when I upload this. Okay, so this needs to be cable managed a bit. like that for now. I'm getting tired. Okay, now we have cards to plug in. You will notice that I had two cards to plug in. Two. First one is my video card. This is a GTX 1080 Ti, as it says right there. Um, I did not buy this new. I put on the heat sink and fan backwards. You can tell because I can't plug this in. It's off shifted slightly. Okay, be back. I'm just gonna do this one off camera. All right, let's try this once more. So I just ripped my CPU out of its socket. Um, <laughs> remember what I had mentioned before about it can get stuck and just yank everything? That's what happened. On the plus side, no damage. I just, I think I had on too much thermal compound. So I'm gonna try this again. With significantly less thermal grease. Do it like that. I 
the entire thing was completely caked along with this side. Thermal Grace is definitely not as good of a connect and conductor as the bottom of this. Also, I'm going to pay attention to which side is which. It's... Why or... Nope, it's definitely this way. Okay. Like so. Okay. Screw this back in and allow my heart to start beating again because ah. <sighs> now that I have the heat sink on in the correct direction. So most heat sinks do not have a one side versus another. This is a specially designed heat sink to make sure that it's not directly up against the video card or worse overhanging it. So it's not actually centered. It's actually centered over here. That's why it didn't work in the other direction. And now you can see that on the right side of the screen, it's overhanging more. This is the way it's supposed to be. Hooray. Okay, now that's tight. Now I need to wash my hands, then we'll put back in video card. Uh, this is already taking too long. Okay, I still haven't even had lunch yet. And it is 14 right now. Let's unplug the fan. It's got tangled up. It needs to go like this. That's easily enough done. As low as possible. Latch on one side. Latch on the other side. Actually latch it further. There. Now it's on pretty tight. Plug this into CPU fan 1 and taken care of. All right. Now let's get back to that whole video card thing. So modern video cards use PCI Express. So it's actually just going into that slot. This is why we had to do everything else first, by the way. And we're done, right? No. That's what these are for. So what we need to do is this one here. And this is kind of an extra breakout cable thing, but this side here. There we go. Now the video card's plugged in. We can screw in the video card if we wish. It was not actually screwed in before because these holes do not like aligning properly. I think it's because the video card's too big. Yep, nope, it's not gonna screw in this time. That's fine. Um, although maybe one of these might work. This is actually a thumb screw from a different device, but thumb screws like this are generally all similar. I know I'm covering up what I'm doing. Nope, those holes aren't aligning at all. Maybe if I squish the case. Squish the case? No. No, you can't even see what I'm doing because it's not within view. All right, finally, we have one more card. And this card is very special. This is not something. Editor me here. Sorry about this. Um, what I was going to cover was the fact that this is a very special card. This is a Thunderbolt 3 add-in card. So my computer is an AMD Ryzen machine, and Thunderbolt is or was an, an Intel proprietary standard. What that means is that you only found Thunderbolt 3 on Intel-based machines, primarily laptops, but occasionally Intel-based desktops as well. This card allows me to have Thunderbolt 3 ports on an actual AMD machine. My motherboard actually has a lot of the headers for it and so on. You can actually see that at the bottom of this image that plugs into my motherboard and this card has to reside in the very lowest spot on the motherboard. This provides me with two Thunderbolt 3 ports, uh, what you can see on the left side of this card at this point. Normally, Thunderbolt 3 also passes video data through, 
which is the reason why the two ports on the right side are present. This allows me to take a cable plugged into my video card and then plug it into this little add-on card as the video input because my motherboard does not actually, or my CPU does not actually have any onboard graphics. All right, uh, I'll let you go back to the rest of the recorded video. There's only a, like a couple minutes left at least, so hooray and sorry about that. Turns out trying to record video at 4K 60 frames per second on my phone for three hours is a little too much for it. Who would have thought? I watched it crash this time. So anyway, the little metal thing over here that slides onto, it's this is what's actually sliding onto it. That way, when you lift, you're actually putting pressure on the metal, not on this cheap plastic handle. Very clever design, actually. Because this case is meant to be mobile. And piece de resistance, the lid, and I'm done. Well, I hope this has been enjoyable for somebody. Um, no idea who, but that's okay. I'm just going to put in the thumb screws for the side panels because those I don't want moving around. And I'll put in a thumb screw for the top as well while I'm at it. It's supposed to really have two thumb screws for everything. Actually, I do have a spare thumb screw over here. I'm putting that in the wrong hole. Anyway, um, well, that's because it's not on. That explains it. So I hope you've enjoyed this internet, and I'm not going to record anything else today. Bye!